new at 10, thieves caught on camera using a truck to break into a beauty supply store in South Memphis, stealing thousands of dollars in goods in just a matter of minutes. Now, this was all off South Bellevue Boulevard, and the owner wants those suspects arrested. WREG's Brian Didlake is joining us live now from the Memphis Police Crump Precinct. And Brian, what else did that owner have to say? Uh, Greg, simply put, when I spoke to Amjad Schumann, who owns a beauty and beyond in South Memphis, he tells me that he was disappointed. He went on to say that the real impact wasn't just the money lost from his stolen goods or even the damage of his store, but with the crime in his area, the way it is now, he may have to shut down. So <laughs> he may have to shut down. How many times have we heard that? from fucking fast food restaurants to um, convenience stores, the drug stores, pharmacies, everybody shutting down all these, everybody shutting down and leaving Blackistan. Salute to um, Mark Ishmael, man. He says, I'm up. Shout out to Pamela Anderson. Coming through once again, man. Hey, man, hit that PayPal cash app, Super Chat, support the channel. Also, hit the like button, man. We need 250 likes for me to drop that link, man. Take the poll, too. Take the poll. I need all you guys to take the poll. We got 168 likes, man. We need about 80 more likes, man. Come on, guys. 80 more likes for me to drop the link, man, so we can bring the panel up, man. And take the poll. down surveillance video capturing the moment thieves break into beauty and beyond in south memphis you can see people in masks hoods and gloves loading up bags full of weaves wigs and beauty products the break-in lasting four to five minutes so this is <clears throat> the front door in there just because yeah, they when they pull up the door we spoke to Amjad Schumann, who owns the beauty supply store. He shared this additional footage showing how the group broke in. You can see someone attach what appears to be a chain to the door. Moments later, they use a box truck to pop the door off its hinges. The last time is uh, to break the whole area. This mm -hmm. whole area has came down, you know, uh, it's to save us this. But uh, but this is not just here, everywhere in Memphis. Schumann says he has been at this location 22 years, but in the last five years, he's seen several break-ins. Why is this the guy who owned the fucking beauty, the yakky store in your neighborhood for the last, <laughs> for the last 22 years? This is the guy who been selling yakky to your sisters for the last 22 years in your community. Think about that. Every community you go to, the person selling the cigarellos and the white teas, and the grape drink, and the yakky, none of them people are black. In every black community, I'm talking about everyone. I'm not talking about most. I'm talking about every single black community. The person selling the fucking cigarellos, the grape drink, the gas, the yakky, the blonde wigs, none of them is black. Yo, at some point we got to say, man, niggas must not be good at that shit. Because for them to have to be, for every black community to be like this across the planet. Idi Amin had to kick them out of Uganda. He had to kick all the fucking Asians out of Uganda. Because they was running all the stores. As soon as he kicked them out, all the stores went bankrupt. You know, uh, it's to save us this, but 
Uh, but this is not just here, everywhere in Memphis. Schumann says he has been at this location 22 years, but in the last five years, he's seen several break-ins. He says when the incident happened, he thought the thieves made off with about $15,000 in merchandise. But after restocking his shelves... Merchandise around twenty-five, and the door cost almost 5000 to fix. With all of this going on, you were saying that you, you may be leaving, but uh, how is that? how is your decision right now? Situation is very bad right now. I mean, this is a big, I mean, last year, it's just happened another time like this. The sign still says open, but Schumann says about the only thing that thieves left him is shattered glass and a lot to think about. I mean, the, the business doesn't afford that. We can't afford that. Mm. Uh, I don't know, maybe the business is going uh, Oh, man, you got insurance, man. Man, you can use your insurance. Well, let me tell you something about insurance. When you in a black neighborhood, your insurance deductible is through the roof. And every claim you get, they don't honor every claim. The insurance company doesn't pay out for every claim when you live in a fucking black community. Because those communities have so much crime. It's such a risk. It's such a high risk. Some goddamn career criminal could get killed by a cop in another town across the country and they'll be protesting your town and your store may get burned down 3,000 miles away because some crackhead was fighting with a cop in another town across the country so insurance companies do not fucking pay out every fucking claim when you fucking have a store in a black neighborhood. Out of business, the company won't shut down maybe this year. I don't know. About mm -mm -mm. 22 years of business. Now, Schumann says he does love serving his community, but going forward, he has a long way to go to recover from this loss. Again, Memphis police are investigating. If you have any information about this, you are encouraged to call them immediately. But for now... Three women are charged after a 16-year-old girl says they beat her up in a fight outside of a North Memphis school. <laughs> now, we done did two stories in the last week and a half where parents done fucking took their kids somewhere to fight and somebody done got shot and killed. We done did two stories in, the, in Memphis and everything don't make the news. Trust me, I live in, I mean, I, 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 I part-time live in D.C. I'll say that. I spend a lot of time in D.C. And man, you could build a news channel. Wherever I stay, you can build a news channel just on that neighborhood. And none of that shit makes the news. Three women are charged after a 16-year-old girl says they beat her up in a fight outside of a North Memphis school. Good evening, and thanks for joining us. I'm Stephanie Skurlock. And I'm Greg Kirsch. In fact, officers say they saw video of the whole incident. Our Jay Simon has more. Security walking across the front of Kip High School Wednesday after a family allegedly jumped a 16-year-old girl. Now, all three of these women are charged with assault, child abuse and neglect. 18-year-old Bria Loggins, her 22-year-old sister Brandy Loggins, and their 38-year-old mother, Ashley Walton. The 16-year-old's mother told police she was picking her daughter up at the school last month when someone pulled her daughter out of the car. According to this affidavit obtained by WREG, the teen told police 18-year-old Bria Loggins came toward her and started the fight. That's when all three women allegedly jumped on her, causing bruises all over. An officer says it was all caught on camera. In a statement to WREG, a representative from KIBB says this happens after school and on city property at a public space often utilized by members of the community. Right now, all three women have been released and are due back in court later this month. Salute the boy Kachin. He says, weaves made from hair of slaves of today, the Uyghurs. Yeah, also a lot of Tibetan monks get a lot of hair from uh, Tibetans, man. 
lot of lot of Asian countries are in on that hustle, man. Women grow their hair and then they shave it off and they they sell it. Salute the boy Kachin. He says, "Sad, hey Ark Nation, yeah, man. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is what it is, man. And black people running around talking about racism. Show me the story. Where's the story of some white women going up to a school and beating up a sixteen-year-old? Where's that story?" Some white women going up to a school and beating up a 16-year-old. Tenants from a South Memphis apartment complex finally getting a visit from code enforcement today after we reported on blight and neglect there last week. But unfortunately, it was not the answer they were hoping for. Thank you for joining us. I'm Pepper Baker. And I'm Rudy Williams. You can see the conditions here. You just saw the postings. Residents told us code enforcement gave them 15 days to vacate the premise. Our Stephen Pimple went back out to investigate and brings us the update tonight. Some tenants say they were told they had 15 days to vacate. That's what one of the few people still living at Latham Heights Apartments told community organizer and Memphis NAACP president Kermit Moore last week after ABC 24's latest story about the lack of care at the South Memphis apartment complex. The next day, code came out. And if this was some on burritos, they wouldn't wait for the fucking manager of the fucking property to come fix the shit. Press one. Where all my on burritos at? If this was some on Brito's living here, ain't no way they would wait for the fucking, they would let the shit get like this because the property manager didn't come fix the shit. Man, they would fix this shit up. This should be looking, <laughs> it should be looking perfect, pristine. All the carpentry and drywall and electricity, all that should be done. Black folk like, man, we waiting on the people to come fix the stuff. So the shit looked like this because the, the white man who owned the building didn't come fix the shit. He a slumlord. So the shit looked like this. The shit got so bad that these houses are condemned now. Negroes let this shit get so bad because the, the property, the slumlord didn't come fix it. Negroes let it get so bad that the properties are now condemned instead of fixing the shit themselves. But, but we built the pyramids. There's no evidence that we built the pyramids, man. There's no evidence. Some tenants say they were told they had 15 days to vacate. That's what one of the few people still living at Latham Heights Apartments told community organizer and Memphis NAACP president Kermit Moore last week after ABC 24's latest story about the lack of care at the South Memphis apartment complex. The next day, code came out and put notices on all of the doors. Many of them have been taken down now. Code enforcement tells me signs like these are not notices to vacate and telling people they have 15 days to leave is something they just don't do. A city of Memphis spokesperson tells ABC 24 the property is being written up for rehab and a request to board all vacant units open to casual entry will be submitted to the owner. City of Memphis code enforcement says an inspector spoke to the property manager on the phone. Now some hombritos, if some migrant hombritos come in come and squat in these places and fix them up, niggas gonna be crying. Press one. If some migrant on burritos come and squat in these places and fix them up, Negroes gonna be crying. 15 days to leave is something they just don't do. A city of Memphis spokesperson tells ABC 24, the property is being written up for rehab and a request to board all vacant units open to casual entry will be submitted to the owner. City of Memphis Code Enforcement says an inspector spoke to the property manager on the phone, and she said she would start the board up process immediately. We tried repeatedly to call the landlord, and they did not respond. 
only going to voicemail. Tenants would not go on camera and say they continue to fear retaliation from their landlord if they speak to the media. The city and county must get down on these absentee landlords who don't take care of them. The city and the county. <laughs> Salute to Adolph Diversity, man. Shout out to you, Adolph Diversity. The Ark Nation Hall of Famer. Boy Kachina says, truth, Ark Tibetans enslaved same time big camps yep but that was yaki black women don't care black women wouldn't don't, don't give a damn that those tibetan women are being enslaved for their hair they're being held in fucking basically bondage to grow hair and cut their hair grows so fast that they grow it down to their ass and they cut it they grow it to, they might grow like fucking five or six Bundles of yaki a year, each woman. Real slavery. Here are the properties. In South Memphis, I'm Stephen Pimpo. Well, it is. But here's the thing, y'all. We look at a city like Memphis and we think it's really a shitty city because of sun people. But if you get the fuck away from sun people in any city, if you get the fuck away from sun people, black people in any city, you will think you're in another city. Press one. This is Memphis, the same city that had 400 homicides last year and fucking every black neighborhood is in a fucking state of fucking hell. Not my words, the people on the news stories that we do every day words. The black people in Memphis, their own words. All Every fucking black neighborhood in Memphis is in fucking hell. It's a fucking war zone. But if you leave them, if you leave their communities, you get this. Well, it is springtime in Memphis, and as the weather gets warmer, you may want to get outside a little more. And in Memphis, there's no shortage of events and festivals to help you out. Here are a few of them, in fact. Over in Cooper Young, the neighborhood will host Porch Fest on April 20th. The event is a grassroots celebration of spring and music on the eclectic porch. <laughs> you can't have this. Sons can't have this, man. You can't have. Listen, they, try, they do this in D.C., right? And... It, it went by cool because it was all white bands. They had a few black bands on porches and shit. And it went it went cool. I was I saw it. I, I was actually doing something, but the neighborhood I when my Airbnb was the neighborhood where they had it. And they had this last year, and it was mostly white bands and white people. It'd be like 20, 30, 40 white people in front of different houses listening to the bands on the porches, play country music or rock music. And it was a it was a it was a sight to behold, man, when they did this in DC. It was a sight to behold. The peace, the civility of these people. In fact. Over in Cooper Young, the neighborhood will host Porch Fest on April 20th. The event is a grassroots celebration of spring and music on the eclectic porches of Cooper Young residents. The neighborhood association puts on the event each year with live music and yard sales to help out with neighbors spring cleaning. Looks like fun, and yeah. they won't have to wear masks this year, hopefully. <laughs> well, also on the 20th, the World Championship Hot Wing Contest and Festival will be heating up. This is their 22nd uh -oh. year. I got them sisters there, man. Kick them sisters out, man. Come on, white folk. Kick them sisters out. They're going to invite some sun men, man. <laughs> white folk, kick these sisters out before they call fucking Ray Ray and Pookie and them. Hey, y'all, it's a barbecue. Hey, these white people made some good chicken. I mean, it's a little, it, it's a little bit under season, but it's free, y'all. Come down here, y'all, and get this free chicken, y'all. I mean, it ain't seasoned right, and uh, and the potato salad got raisins in it, but it's free. Tell everybody, come down here. 
fun yeah. and they won't have to wear masks this year, hopefully. Well, also on the 20th, the World Championship Hot Wing Contest and Festival will be heating up. This is their 22nd year in business, and this year they're moving oh, from yeah. Tiger Lane to the River Garden Park on Riverside Drive. Both the contest and the festival benefit the Ronald McDonald House. And if wings aren't really your thing, just head down to Riverside on the 21st and the 31st. Raisin Cajun Croft is... Hey, y'all. Uh... <laughs> Y'all need to charge a hundred dollars for parking. <laughs> charge a hundred dollars for parking and have a goddamn metal detector there. You won't have to worry about shit. Press one. A hundred dollars for parking and a metal detector, and you won't have to worry about shit. Office. Crawfish Fest will kick off. If I can get that out of my mouth. Porter Leith puts on the event every oh. year, and the best part oh, is it. Oh, shit. Look at them goddamn sisters back there. Look at all these sisters walking past, man. Look at them back. All these sisters walking past. Porter Leith puts on the event every year, and the best part is it's completely free. Plus, the event always has some interesting games like crawfish bobbing, eating, and racing. I'm more of a wings guy yeah. than a crawfish guy, but yeah, it looks agree. like fun. And Look at how much stuff it is to do in this city. Meanwhile, black folks is living like it's Haiti in their neighborhoods. Every black neighborhood in Memphis could literally be in Haiti. Meanwhile, in the same city, white folks are living like this. On the 27th, you can wash all that down with Wiseacre's ninth Taste the Rarity event. Each year, they invite dozens of breweries from all over to give out samples to... Hey, man. <laughs> That's the closest you're going to get to a shooting. Press one. This the closest you're going to get to a shooting down here, man. <laughs> you can't have no motherfucking beer fucking fest. You can't have no beer fest with no niggas, man. <laughs> you mean free alcohol or alcohol or alcohol fucking festival and shit with some niggas? You can't do that. Only white folk can do that. This the closest you're going to have to a shooting. Than yeah. a crawfish guy, but yeah, it looks agree. like fun. And on the 27th, you can wash all that down with Wiseacre's ninth Taste the Rarity event. Each year, they invite dozens of breweries from all over to give out samples to everyone who attends. That looks more on my speed. Right, as well. I agree. And we only <laughs> named a few of the events this month to get a full list on all of the festivals going on around town. Just text the word events to 901 321 7520 and we'll send a list to your phone. Again, that's the word events to 901 321 75. Fighting food insecurity and food waste. Listen to this every year, more than 1 million tons of food ends up in Tennessee landfills. That's unbelievable, right? Not only leading to excess methane in the atmosphere, but also depriving people in need of potentially nutritious food. Stefan Reels shares the story of work being done to bridge that gap during the food waste prevention. And now back to Blackistan, where they whining about people throwing away food. Week. We just wanted to make it a lot easier for people to have access to good quality, healthy food. For three years, Memphian LJ Abraham has run 901 Community Fridges to help tackle food insecurity in the Mid-South. The community puts into the fridge and anybody who needs food can come and take it out. That's a white person. These white people, man. That's a white arm, man. I know a white arm when I see it. <laughs> white people putting food in and niggas taking it out. <laughs> White people putting food in. Look at this shit. You could tell white people put this shit in. Look at that whole wheat bread with fucking oats, oat bread and shit. Black people only eat Wonder Bread. Look at this motherfucking uh, pasta salad. That shit look bland as shit, man. White people putting this food in here. Niggas is taking it out complaining. Niggas is like, ew, this shit ain't got enough salt in it. Ew. Black person, a black person to be poor, open this shit and be like, man, I'm about to go steal something. Fuck this shit. Fridges.
helped tackle food insecurity in the Mid-South. The community puts into the fridge and anybody who needs food can come and take it out. Five of these community fridges have been set up all across Memphis. The problem they're running into, though, is as soon as they're filled, they're almost completely empty. <laughs> Thin minutes is pretty empty. There's a lot of people in Memphis who utilize the service every single day, multiple times a day. People like John Gore, who used to be homeless himself, but now spends his time traveling to fridges to help people in need. If you haven't been there, you don't know. Try to do what God wants. He spends his time traveling the fridges, helping people in need. Like John Gore, who used to be homeless himself, but now spends his time traveling to fridges to help people in need. If you hadn't been there, you don't know. Try to do what God wants me to do, you know. He blesses me, I try to bless other people. Joel Searcy with the Tennessee Department of Environment and... <laughs> I love y'all gliders, man. If sons won't tell you this, man, I love you gliders, man. Man, y'all make the world a better place, man. <laughs> Shout out to you gliders, man. <laughs> They try to act like this black woman and this was her shit. This ain't your shit, black lady. They, you just, a, you just, a, they just put you out front. These white people run this shit, man. Shout out the gliders, man. Joel Searcy with the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation said an option to help fill these fridges might just be at the fingertips of Memphians. The department estimates there's around 200,000 tons of food waste every year in Shelby County a lot of which is thrown out before it even goes bad. One avenue of dealing with food waste is putting uh, effort into food rescue or food recovery. And it would be so helpful if we had that instead of it going into the garbage. In Memphis, I'm Stephen Reels. Most of the time it occurs out in the ocean or over a remote part of land. So to be within an hour and a half's drive, potentially, of the path of totality is such a rare thing. The eclipse this year has many excited, but maybe not as much as the president of the Memphis Astronomical Society, Jeremy Veldman. He'll be heading out with other members of the group to Arkansas to view the solar eclipse. Using tools as basic as a colander, all the way up to solar eclipse binoculars, and a telescope, he hopes to get the best view. Right. Well, the Memphis Astronomical Society has been around for 70 years. We're a nonprofit public service organization, basically a bunch of astronomy nerds who just geek out on the night sky. Even with this, he says the group hopes to allow others to see exciting things in our sky even after April 8th. The group has members but also hosts events for the public during the year, including star parties, where attendees can view the night sky, the next of which occurs on May 4th in Wynn, Arkansas. Jeremy says that this event can be a great way for anybody, including kids, to get interested in our night sky and hopes to see more people looking at the stars after this upcoming eclipse. Because if you can get your, your, your kids to look through the eyepiece of a telescope at the craters of the moon, the rings of Saturn, uh, the moons of Jupiter, it's typically just an awe-inspiring experience that hopefully inspires them to want to take it further. If some niggas came out here and started shooting, this dude would guarantee be the one to get hit with the bullet. I promise you. He would be that he would be the one to get hit. Mm, mm, mm. Salute to CA. She says, sons always rob, intimidate, or harass any maintenance workers. No one can ever get work done. I says, you think the sun's sun mindset is the great filter that all civilization have to overcome to reach the next level of enlightenment and advancement? I think liberal whites, I think liberal whites more so than sons, man. I think liberal whites more so than sons because a lot of advancements have been made with sons around. I think you got to get past liberal whites. Sons have been there the whole time, man. The pyramids were built while sons was there. <laughs> the, the, the industrial age, the conveyor belt, man, the assembly line. The, the combustible engine, the Model T, the Wright Brothers, all that shit was made with sons around, man. 
don't get me wrong, we a problem, but we can be controlled, man. You, we can be controlled, man. It's just that you know, liberal white folk, man. They ruin it. They ruin it. They, they're probably you got to kind of like get them before you get sons. Sons, we just ah, it's, it, we a problem too, man. Um. Salute the bugger off, man. Bugger off, man. Yeah, man. Y'all don't understand, man. Oh, shit. Here's the latest on a story we brought you is breaking news on Good 